as we enter this month and we celebrate the history of our people. I am one that firmly believes that we ought to always celebrate our history. If I can be honest with you, I know there is great consternation among a lot of people that deliberates whether or not we ought to have a Black History Month, but I am one that feels like we ought to celebrate black history every day of our lives. And if I could be real with you, I think that we ought to not just celebrate black history, but every community within our nation ought to celebrate its history. Because the reality is America is a melting pot, and we weren't made by one persuasion or the other. We weren't made by one nationality or the other, but because we've had so many different people uh, to come into this land by which we hail, we hail uh, and have made great conflicts uh, and also great contributions uh, to cause us to be who we are as a nation. I just believe that every nation in this world, uh, every people in this nation uh, ought to celebrate who they are and where they come from. When we celebrate the deeds of those of our past, uh, when we celebrate the great accomplishment uh, of those who've gone before us. When we celebrate uh, our history, uh, we do more than celebrate the accomplishments of one, uh, but we, what we celebrate uh, is the heritage of us all. Uh, can I preach the way I feel this morning? Uh, one of the issues in our society is we have lost our sense of heritage, uh, and because we don't have a sense of heritage, uh, we don't have any pride in who we are right now, but baby, if I look back over the annals of time, uh, and I can see what my people have contributed uh, to this great land in which we live. Uh, my heritage reminds me, uh, in the words uh, of the great Jesse Jackson, uh, I am somebody. Uh, our heritage uh, will cause us to believe uh, I can do more than what was accomplished on yesterday because my heritage uh, reminds me of what I came from. All too often, because we don't know we've come from greatness. We doom our children to folly and failure all too often because we don't know we've come from greatness. We doomed our children to being dregs of society rather than being the kings and royal priesthood that God has commissioned us to be. All too often, uh, because we don't celebrate our heritage, uh, we doom our children uh, into thinking that they will always be on the bottom. Uh, but in the hit Black History Month, uh, we take time uh, to celebrate where we came from. Yeah. We take time to celebrate the great accomplishments we've had in science. We take time to celebrate the great strides we made in education. We take time to celebrate uh, the great moves we made in business. We take time uh, to celebrate uh, how we've changed the world with athletics. Uh, we take time uh, to celebrate uh, every good thing that we've done in this society. But as we begin to celebrate the things that we've done, uh, I think the thing that we need to celebrate the most uh, as we look from whence we've come, uh, we've got to learn to celebrate family. Because truth be told, Without family, there would be nothing. We might as well understand that the, old, the oldest institution in this world is family. Before there was a nation, there was a family. Before there was a school, there was a family. Before there was a bank, there was a family. Before there was a football or basketball team, there was a family. Before there was anything in this world, there was family. And without family, this world will collapse. But isn't it mighty funny that the oldest institution in the world is the one that we study the least in church? Isn't it mighty strange 
that that which God has orchestrated from the beginning of time is the one thing that we neglect to study from the biblical writ. Uh, we'll learn how to be great this and great that. Uh, but baby, I want us to understand that we can't be a great nation uh, until we rebuild the family. Uh, you can't have a great community uh, until you learn to rebuild the family. Uh, you can't even have a good church uh, until you learn to rebuild the family. Uh, so this Sunday morning, uh, I want to pause long enough to remind us uh, that we've got to understand the importance of the family. Because it is the first institution that God has brought into this world. It reminds us that God has taught us some things through the family that you learn there first before you learn it anywhere else. The first thing we learn because of family is that you can't make it in this world by yourself. I think I ought to say that again uh, because we live in a selfish and self-centered society and we think that it's all about us. Uh, but the reality of it is uh, you can make it in this world uh, by yourself. Uh, and family tells us that uh, because after all, uh, in order for you to exist, uh, you had to have a mother and a father to come together and have a union uh, and create the you that you are. And so, baby, even if they left you on the doorstep, uh, thank God for family because uh, without family, family. Uh, I would have no existence. Uh, you can't make it in this world. Uh, in the ups and downs of life, uh, I'm so glad that there's family uh, that will allow me to understand. Uh, I've got a support system uh, that when I need some encouragement, uh, I can call on family. Uh, family remind me uh, that if I need a morsel of bread, uh, I can just knock on my sister's door uh, and she'll give me a little bit to get me through. Uh, family reminds you, uh, you can't make Make it in this world by yourself. Family teaches us hierarchy and how to respect authority. As I look at the absence of respect and authority in this world, I recognize the reason why it's so is because it starts in the family. When I look at some of our young boys that disrespect the police department, uh, they disrespect the people in their schools, uh, they disrespect the people in the community, uh, the problem is they have not been taught respect in the household. Uh, but baby, when you're raised in a proper family, uh, the first thing that you learn is hierarchy. Uh, you recognize that there's a certain authority in place. Uh, can I preach the way I feel this Sunday morning? In the groom's household, uh, I understood that mama's word was law, uh, and if I stepped outside of the law of mama's word. I had to deal with the issue of mama's hand. And I'm so glad that authority taught me how to be a good son, taught me how to be a good man, taught me how to be respectful in the world. That authority in the house followed me to the house of God. In family, you learn to respect authority. Because in mama's house, it was mama's rules. And if you didn't like mama's rules, you had to leave mama's house. It wasn't laying up on the sofa because you felt like it. It's mama's house, mama's rules. And not only did I learn authority, I also learned hierarchy. One of the problems, can I preach the way I feel? I'm glad you said yes, I was gonna do it anyway. One of the problems, in our society is children don't know their place. Can I paint the picture of Joseph's meeting with his brothers? Because when Joseph's brothers met him uh, in Egypt uh, and had that great banquet, uh, Joseph had a table set aside for his brothers, uh, and his brothers sat in line uh, in age of progression, uh, understanding that there was a hierarchy and a place uh, for each member of the family. Uh, now, what am I trying to tell you? Uh, I'm saying too often uh, we don't set the people in their right place. Uh, and when your children are out of place, uh, your family is upside down. Uh, and when your family is upside down, uh, 
the devil runs amok. But baby, when you learn to treat people and teach them that you have a right place in the family, that reminds them that I have a right place in the world. When you say you got a place where God will show you honor, if I honor those above me, then God will honor you in the world. But if I don't teach you honor in the house, then you won't learn honor in the world. Can I give you a freebie? If you don't teach your children honor in the house, they're going to embarrass you in the marketplace. That one's for free. Family teaches you responsibility. I must admit, raising my grandson brought out a different side of me. And I, can, I, can, can I confess right now? I know I made that brat to be the brat that he is. And one of the problems is I have not given him responsibility over certain things. And don't look at me crazy, because some of y'all done that not with your grandchildren, but with your children. But think about how we were raised and how we were brought up. Uh, everybody in the household uh, had a responsibility. It did not matter what it was. Uh, you had to do something on a consistent basis, uh, because mama and daddy understood uh, if I don't teach you responsibility now, uh, you'll be a 45-year-old grown man uh, that don't know how to take care of his own family. If I don't teach you responsibility, now, you'll never get off my sofa. If I don't teach you responsibility now, I'll be feeding you today and paying your car note tomorrow. Family is where we learn responsibility. My mother had a phrase that I got to give you the clean version. She said, if I got to clean, every living behind got to clean. That's the clean version. But in that, we learned there was a responsibility to stay in the household. Nobody stayed for free. And guess what? You also didn't have any say-so because there was a different authority. Family, we learned responsibility. But family, we also learned community. When we look at our society, what's missing is a sense of community. There is no oneness in us. And the reason, can, can I, can I, there's no oneness in the nation because there's no oneness in the church. There's no oneness in the church because there's no oneness in the family. We've lost our sense of community, uh, and the devil understands uh, the best way to attack the most impersonal uh, and most important unit and institution in the world uh, is to give everybody uh, this sense and spirit of individuality. Uh, we've brought this world up now to where everybody thinks it's all about them. Uh, every time you turn around, uh, somebody wants to the world to look at me. Uh, I am a great and avid sports fan, but one of the things that irks my nerve, like, as soon as an athlete does what he wants to, is supposed to do, uh, he wants to gyrate and tell the world to look at me. Uh, I don't care if you made a first down, that's your job. Uh, I don't care if you scored in the basket, uh, that's your job. Uh, and the problem that we have, uh, our children have developed that same mentality until they think that it's all about them. Uh, and that spirit of individuality uh, has broken down the spirit of community. Uh, they have forgotten uh, that baby when I'm lifted up uh, is because of who supported me uh, and when I'm lifted up uh, I've got a responsibility uh, to bring somebody with me uh, they have forgotten uh, that it's not just the individual uh, but when the whole tide is raised uh, every boat is lifted uh, we've got to get back uh, to understand uh, that we are a unit uh, and not a group of individuals <laughs> There was a time when children would go off to college, get an education, come back to the household, come back to the city in which they were raised, use those same skills and lessons to build up the entire family and community. Now we live in a time when our children go off to college they never come back from whence they've returned. The reason why if they lost their sense of community uh, because the spirit of individualism uh, has plagued this world. 
in the family, we've learned conflict resolution. Anybody in here got more than one sibling or at least a sibling? Baby, I stopped by to remind you if there's more than one person in the house, you're going to have conflict. Amen. And I don't care what the age group is or what the age gap is or what the gender gap is. Uh, you're going to have conflict. Uh, but it's in the family. Uh, it's where we first learn conflict resolution. Uh, because truth be told, brothers and sisters will get on each other's nerves. Uh, as much as I love my sisters, uh, as much as I would move the moon and the stars for them, uh, can't nobody pluck my nerves uh, like those three Negro women. Uh, but I love them with all my heart. Uh, but because we grew up in the same household uh, because we had to eat at the same table uh, because we slept under the same roof uh, whenever there was a conflict uh, we had to learn to work that thing out because uh, I'm not going nowhere and you're not going nowhere so because we learned uh, conflict resolution uh, the same one uh, that could send me over the edge uh, is the same one uh, that knows how to draw me back in uh, and give me that old sisterly love uh, kiss me on the cheek uh, and reconcile that the family uh, might be made whole. But our kids, they don't learn conflict resolution in the household. And that's why there's so much murder in our streets. You can trace every ill in our society to the family unit. Not only does the family teach us conflict resolution, uh -huh. but can I help us out? Yeah. The family teaches you who you really are. Uh -huh. Amen lights in here. Yeah. When I come to church on a Sunday morning, I can put my Sunday face on. When I go to, the, to, to my job, I could, could put my professional face on. If I'm out in the streets, I could put my street look on. But baby, when I walk back in mama's house, mama still remind me who I am. Uh, I don't care where I am in the church. Uh, mama still say, take out the trash. Uh, I don't care where you are in the job. Uh, mama will still say, wash them dishes. Uh, I don't care who you are in the streets. Uh, your sisters and brothers will remind you, you still ain't nobody. I'm so glad that family knows who you really are. And because they know who you really are, they won't let you get so high that you think too much of yourself uh, and they won't let you get so low uh, that you degrade yourself because uh, when I'm high they know how to bring me down uh, and when I'm low uh, they know how to lift me up uh, they know how to tell you uh, lift up your head because you carry our name uh, lift up your head because you reflect all of us uh, lift up your head because you represent the bloodline uh, I'm so glad family teaches us who we really are. Family is vital. Family is important. The dictionary defines family as a group of people or things that has something in common. Two things about family, and I'm going to press on to the scripture. The first thing that family tells us is that we are all related. You see, we want to be able to diss some people and push some people off uh, and, and disconnect from some folk. But baby, I stopped by to remind you, you can't change your relation. Uh, I don't care how mad you get, uh, you can't change that relationship. Uh, I don't care how many times uh, you want to get mad and hang up the telephone and not call them again. Uh, you can't change that relationship. Uh, and so because we're related, uh, that lets me know that we're also interconnected, uh, that no matter what's going on, uh, wherever I go, I take my family with me. Uh, whatever I do, uh, I'm casting an aspersion on who my family is. Uh, so because we're interconnected. Uh, whatever we do, we bring the whole clan with us. And can I give you a third one? Family is also irreplaceable. You live long enough. You're going to go to a few funerals. And some of them are going to be family. 
And baby, I don't care what the relationship is. It could be brother and sister. It could be aunt or cousin. And you could have a thousand of all of them. Uh, but nobody replaces the one that's left. Uh, others might help you get through. Uh, others might help you get over. But you never replace that which is lost. Uh, that's why it's important uh, that we understand uh, because of our connection to each other. Uh, we got to understand that I can't replace uh, the benefits that you have in my life. Family is so important that oftentimes Jesus paralleled the relationship to the church as family. I'm so glad that the Bible says Jesus uttered out of his own mouth that we're no longer servants but friends. And then took him to another level, said no longer friends but brothers. In other words, when we get to the household of faith, baby, we're not members. We're family. We're family because we understand that we got the same father. We're family because we understand we've got some things in common. And what is it that we have in common? First of all, we had the same condition. Sin wreaked havoc over our lives. Had a death sentence over our souls. But I'm so glad not only did we have the same problem, but we got the same Savior. And because we family, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. The text, so I don't hold you too long, displays a principle that we often overlook. When we read the Genesis story, we see the beginning of everything. We see the God that we serve uh, is the originator, the orchestrator, and the architect uh, of the great world in which we live. Uh, can I preach it the way I feel this Sunday morning? Because when I think about the Genesis story, uh, there's a certain excitement in my spirit uh, because I see how much my God loves me. Uh, because the Genesis story tells us that God made the entire world, uh, everything that was suitable uh, for the habitation of humanity, uh, everything that you needed. Uh, God put it in place, uh, and then God made you. We understand that this story tells us not only the beginning of the world, but the beginning of humanity. And we often study these two scriptures, uh, thinking about the start of Adam and Eve. Uh, but what we often gloss over, uh, what we often overlook, uh, is we overlook that God not only started Adam and Eve, uh, but he started family. Four principles. The text teaches us, and I'm sitting down. Principle number one, family is God-given. Help me, Holy Ghost, in the house. We've got to learn to treat our family like a special gift from God. Because the truth of the matter is, God knew exactly what it was going to take uh, to raise up what he wants raised up in you. Uh, and he did not arbitrarily put you into the family in which you are in. Uh, it was by divine orchestration that he allowed your mama and daddy, your cousins and your siblings uh, to be linked to your bloodline uh, because God knew uh, in order for what you to have, what I need you to have, uh, I got to put you in the right family. And can I help somebody else out? Uh, because we get so caught up in the dysfunction of our family family until we miss the function of our family. Every family is dysfunctional. The only question is how does your family function? And so when I look at my sisters and brothers in fight of their problems, I thank God that you gave me them because they help edify my soul. When I look at my mother and father in spite of my flaws, I thank God you gave me them because they knew how to rear me up in spite of what's going on around me. I thank God. Because if I would have been birthed to another bloodline, I'd be a different person and would not enjoy the joy of my relationship with God that I learned from my family. Secondly, each member of the family had a purpose and a place. One of the problems with our children is they don't have a sense of place or a sense of purpose. 
So consequently, they go out in the world trying to find themselves, trying to find themselves uh, through degradation, trying to find themselves uh, through gang relations, trying to find themselves uh, through drugs and alcohol, trying to find themselves uh, through sexual abuse, trying to find themselves uh, through chasing fame and fortune. Uh, and they're chasing these things uh, because they're trying to find uh, their sense of purpose. Uh, but when I look at the text, uh, the text reminds us uh, that God gave the first family uh, a sense of purpose uh, and a place uh, as he placed them in the garden. Uh, each one in the family uh, had a function. Uh, the Bible said uh, that as they had two sons, uh, Cain and Abel, uh, one tended the sheep, uh, the other tilled the ground. Uh, God wants you to know uh, you got a function uh, in this family. Uh, you got a purpose uh, to fulfill. Uh, you got a job to do. Uh, I've learned that when we give our children purpose, uh, that gives them pride. Uh, when they get pride, they get dignity. When they get dignity, they learn to respect themselves. When they respect themselves, they will respect you. But if they have no purpose, if they have no purpose, then their mind becomes the devil's playground. Can I give you something that I didn't give 8 o'clock? The text tells us that not only do they have place and purpose, but they're given to support each other. Uh -huh. For us black folks, I think I ought to say that again. <laughs> they were given uh -huh. to support each other. Adam understood that my responsibility as husband was to support my wife and to make sure that I did what God commissioned and commanded, uh, that she might be supported. Eve understood uh, that in order to support my husband, uh, I got to follow in the obedience of God. Uh, Cain and Abel understood uh, that in order to support my family, uh, I got to perform my function uh, that we might have the proper food on the table. Uh, one of the things we have to understand is we got to teach our family, uh, baby, we support each other. Uh, I can only go uh, as far as you lift me. Uh, I can only rise uh, as far as you help me. Uh, and you will only go uh, as far as I bring you uh, when we learn uh, to support each other. One of the things I admire about other communities, I remember distinctly living next to this Mexican family. And as one moved in, he brought in brothers and sisters. And they had an old raggedy beat up car. And they fixed that car and lived in that house until they bought another old raggedy beat up car. And then they fixed that car and lived in that house. Uh, then there was a third raggedy beat up car uh, and they fixed that house uh, and fixed that car. Uh, and then the next thing you know, uh, every brother had a car. Uh, then every brother bought his wife. Uh, then every brother had his own. Uh, that family uh, learned to support each other. Uh, and it went from one having uh, to everybody having. Uh, they got to understand. Uh, I wish we could understand. Uh, we got to support each other. And can I close with this? This text shares with me, as I told you once before, that family is a group of individuals that have something in common. The first family gives a great theological lesson for the church because after all, we are family. In the first family, and we see where God made Adam out of the dust of the ground. We see where God gave him a skeletal structure, put the meat on his bones, then the skin around his body. We see where Adam uh, had the blood flowing through his veins, and then God gave, gave him the breath of life. Uh, we see what God did for Adam, uh, but what you got to understand is after God made Adam, uh, he brought Eve, uh, and he said, what I got to do uh, is take the rib out of Adam uh, and create Eve. Uh, so the same blood that was in Adam uh, is now in Eve. Uh, and when I look at what transpired, uh, Adam and Eve, two fully grown adults, uh, when they were allowed to consummate the marriage, uh, produced Cain and Abel. Uh, and the same blood that was in Adam uh, is the same blood that was in Eve. Uh, that's the same blood that was in Cain uh, and the same blood that was in Abel. Uh, what am I trying to tell you? Uh, they were all uh, of the same blood. Uh, and when I look at the church, uh, we've got to understand, uh, baby, uh, we're all uh, of the same blood. Uh, I understand uh, that we're family, uh, not because
because of the name on the door. I understand we're family, not because when I joined, I understand we're family because we're all under the same blood. We're all under pure blood. We're all under redeeming blood. We're all under eternal blood. We're all under the blood of Jesus. So when you look at your neighbor to the left and your neighbor to the right, tell your neighbor, neighbor, we share the same blood that keeps us in proper respect of every other family member. Let me shut up. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you.